Hey everybody, Mike Iaconelli here. Welcome to a brand new shop, not in the shop, but on the lake. And in today's shop, we've got a great one for you today. And we've got a topic that if you fish in the spring, you're going to encounter these conditions. We're out here on Lake X today and we have a very typical thing that's happening. And in today's shop, we're going to talk about how to deal with cold, dirty water in the spring. Okay? Cold, dirty water in the spring. You're going to encounter this. I don't care if you fish on the weekends or you're a hardcore tournament guy, you're going to encounter dirty, cold water in the spring sometime in your life. And uh, we're going to talk about it. Let's really analyze what happens here this time of the year, okay? And, and why this is a common scenario, okay? Springtime, most of the time, most parts of the country, we're talking about March, April, 100% April. And even into May, if you're in North Country, right? If you're in a colder climate, this happens a lot in the month of May as well. So, you know, the scenario is this. It's springtime, fish are moving, from their winter pattern to places where they want to spawn, right? They're pre-spawn, they're moving, they're transient. They want to be shallow, they want to be biting. But a big storm comes through and this storm dumps a lot of rain. The rain is cold. That cold influx of water lowers the water temperature, makes it dirty, and it really presents a scenario that can be challenging but there are ways to catch them in cold, muddy water in the spring. You've heard of the saying, right? April showers, right? April showers brings May flowers. You've heard of those sayings. And it's true. And you know, in the spring, March, April, May, especially April, you're gonna get these systems. You're gonna get these fronts. And especially the ones that come from the north, the northeast, the Northwest that are bringing a lot of water into your favorite lake, river, reservoir, whatever you're fishing. It's dumping a lot of rain. And when these systems come from the North instead of the South, unfortunately, that rain is cold. So every spring like clockwork, what you're looking at right now is, is what we're gonna be dealing with. So before I get into the baits and how I approach it, I do want it real quick throw the other scenario at you. And I think it's important to address this other one. About 30% of the time, a system will come through in March, April, and May, spring showers, but the system comes from the south or the southwest. And guess what? The rain that's dumped, the incoming water that's dumped into that lake or river or reservoir is warm rain not cold rain, okay? That's a whole different scenario, but I wanted to address it real quick. So in the spring, when you have a system that dumps warm rain or water that's warmer than the mean temperature of the lake, that's actually gonna be a magnet, okay? And that makes the fishing better. So when it's warm rain, I like to go to where that warm, dirty water is coming in. Um, it's going to come in in feeder creeks, it's going to come in in river arms, it's going to come in in drains or ditches in the backs of the pockets. A lot of times you can see it with your eyes. You could actually see the flow coming in. And if it's stained or dirty, and if it's warm in March, April, and May, those fish will head to that incoming dirtier warm water. I've seen it a million times. Lakes uh, up here in the Northeast, lakes in the Ozarks, like Table Rock, even lakes out West, I've seen this happen. So, so warm rain is different, but 70% of the time, cold rain, rain that dumps, and that same inflow of dirty, stained, muddy water that coming, that's coming in, it's colder than the main lake, okay? So we really have to combat these conditions by doing a couple things with our baits. Um, so this is really where it gets to the meat of this. You know, the first one is um, that stained dirty water changes the way fish set up and it changes the way the fish eat. And they really go from using their sense of sight when the water is normal or clean 
to instead using their sense of sound and vibration, okay? That cold, muddy water uh, really messes their environment up. And when it, when, it, when it causes their environment to get dirty and, and it changes what they were used to in the spring, they're gonna rely on vibration and sound, okay? And because of that, when we have these cold, dirty water spring conditions, we're gonna use baits that have vibration and sound, especially when we're power fishing, okay? So I'm gonna show you a couple of my favorites, and I've, I've really got on the, uh, on the power fishing side, I've got two that are really standouts, and the one is a spinner bait, and or a chatterbait, okay? I'm gonna put these two in the same category because they have a lot of the same elements. You know, you look at this one, we've got a Mullix. This is a, just a double Colorado, a half ounce water slash. That Colorado blade produces a tremendous amount of thump and vibration, as does the blade of that chatter bait or slobber knocker or whatever bait you're throwing, right? Tremendous amount of vibration being thrown off by that blade. So this is gonna offset that dirty stained cold water because it's really gonna vibe down there. It's gonna throw off a lot of vibration. In fact, when I'm fishing that chatter bait or spinner bait under these cold, dirty springtime water conditions. I even like to add a trailer to that bait. I like a, a boot tail, something like a, you know, a 2.8 or a 3.3 power swimmer. This is the 3.5 um, power stinger with the paddle version, little tail version on it. Same thing with the chatterbait, right? I want a trailer. There's a, a little crawfish, Berkeley crawfish on the back that has some extra action. And again, I'm thinking about vibration, I'm thinking about using that bait to help them find it. The other thing you're gonna see is color-wise, right? Um, and, and I'm gonna talk about this on both sides, but color-wise, I'm using colors that show up well in this dirty water. So they're using vibration, they're using sound, but I'm not using like natural looking translucent lures. I'm using bright colors, the chartreuses, the reds, the oranges, this is a color by Mollusk called Mudvein. It's got that orange kicker blade. I'm using those colors to help them hone in on it, okay? The other thing I wanna talk about before I get into this next lure category, besides that cold, dirty water making them, you know, makes them have a hard time to find the bait, those fish will get very tight to the cover. So think about that, right? You get this cold, muddy water that comes into a system. The water's rising, right? You've got this influx of this cold, muddy water. They really get next to something. They get tight to something. So, you know, if, if you were fishing before the rain and you were catching them in open water and staging off an open water point, those fish, as that water rises and gets cold, they suck to the cover. They get real tight to the cover. I mean, like elbow to elbow with that stump or that log or that dock or that area of emergent lily pads. And we're gonna see some of that today as, as we fish. They get right into it. Because as that water rises, they sort of rise with the water and they get tight, okay? They get right on it, right next to it. And the great thing about a lure like a spinnerbait or a chatterbait is I could put it near those targets and just really slow thump it down there. Uh, Colorado blade, chatterbait, just slow thump it and let those fish find it, okay? So, extremely tight to the cover. The other great thing about those fish that are going to the cover is that a lot of times the cover itself offsets the cold, dirty water. L let me explain that real quick because, you know, I, I know a lot of you are saying, what do you mean the cover offsets the cold, cold stained, dirty water? Well, you know, if you look at a piece of cover, whether it's a dock with a black float on it, and we've got one right here to my right, or it's a stump that's dark, or it's lily pads that are, that are these green pads and green stems, or it's whatever it is, right? Whatever that cover is, it's absorbing the heat. So on a day like today where it's, it's cold and the water's cold, but we have, we have solar heat, radiant heat, that dock and that stump, and that piece of brush, they absorb the sun and they make like a little warming blanket for the fish, right? 
You know, like when you got little kids, you're like, you want your blankie? You want your little blankie? That's exactly what happens with these fish. They want their blankie because the water's cold and it's dirty and they want their blankie. So they suck tight the cover. They generally rise with the rising water, but we need vibration and we need sound to help them fish find it. On the sound side, I've got two that I love in this dirty, cold water spring conditions. The one's not gonna come as a surprise at all. A lipless vibration bait, AKA rattle trap or trap. You've heard them called that. This is actually the war pig uh, by Berkeley. And I don't even have it out of the pack yet. I'm gonna tie it on here in a second, but you can hear it guys. Load it with BB shot, load it with rattles, has vibration. If you look at the war pig, has a very broad front to it, a very broad wide head. That's gonna give it that, that broad hunting action. So you got sound, you got vibration. Again, look at the colors, right? Chartreuses, oranges, reds, bright colors to help them find it. So lipless vibration and a crankbait. Now, you know, this is a Berkeley Fritz side, which is perfect for the cold, muddy water. It has a little bit of vibration. It's tight though, but this is the clicking Fritz side. So under these conditions, cold, dirty water in the spring, March, April, May, lipless vibration, tight wobble crankbait, but a tight wobble crankbait that has rattles. So click and fritz side, baits that have some rattles for sound. Uh, again, I'm fishing them not just in the open water out in the middle of nowhere, but I'm fishing them tight to the cover. I'm fishing them in that newly flooded conditions, right? Up, up top. All right, so sound, vibration, using those things to, to combat the dirty water, fishing tight to cover, covers like a blankie, it's absorbing the heat. But I also wanna tell you that I finesse fish a bit when this water gets cold and dirty in the spring. You know, this one's funny because you're gonna look at me and say, what do you mean? This isn't a finesse technique, but an old school jig, a small compact jig is a great way to finesse them under these conditions. So even though a jig is sort of a power fishing lure, I'm putting it in the finesse category because I can take a, a small jig like this. This is a missile mini flip, three eighths, half ounce. Again, look at these colors, black, black and blue, dark color as contrast to this dirty water. You know, or here's green punkin with orange. I could put some orange in the bait. I'm gonna use this same bait and finesse those fish that have risen with that cold, dirty water, right? So now I get around that dock and that stump. I'm throwing a spinner bait, chatter bait, crank bait, all that. But if I really want to slow down and finesse them, sometimes they don't want to chase. A jig to me is a cold spring, cold, dirty water springtime bait to slow down and finesse. So compact jig. And then last but not least, I don't want to. I don't want to not mention this. Are plastics and plastics are still great ways to catch them even when the water's cold and dirty in the spring. And without a doubt, these are my two favorites. You know, you've heard me do, look, look on my channel's uh, topic list. We've probably got 50 videos on this bait, but a soft stick bait rigged wacky or rigged on a shaky or rigged Texas is a very good bait in cold, uh, dirty water in the spring. Just like that little jig, this is a great lure that I can clean up with, right? I can go back and really uh, slow down on those same cover, that, the same blanky areas, I can slow down. Um, I like the bigger stick baits. Uh, I want it to have a bigger presence in the water when it's dirty, the fives, the sixes, and again, color to offset that dirty water. So this is um, uh, Ike's Magic, black and blue with red flake, uh, you know, use an orange or chartreuse dyes to, to make it pop. It's all good. And then last but not least, big craze uh, today on uh, jig head minnows and jig head lures and swim baits. And really what I do under these cold, dirty conditions is I take those little natural translucent minnows off my jig head and I switch to an old school grub. And I, I'm using grubs, bright colors, uh, chartreuses, black, uh, green pumpkin with a bright orange tail or stark white, there's a stark white, and I'm threading on the jig head, fishing it the same way I would those little finesse minnows and those little finesse translucent swim baits. But now I'm, I've got a bait that has a little more thump and vibration. This is a Berkeley Power Grub, four inch. See that big curl tail, it's gonna have vibration. 
and it's got more presence in the water. So this is another good little finesse application for when that water gets cold and dirty. All right, uh, just wrapping it up, guys, listen. Uh, and by the way, in a second here, I'm gonna stop talking, I'm gonna drop the trolling motor, and we're dealing with these conditions. These are real life conditions. We had, you ready for this? Four inches of rain three days ago, and now we're dealing with the results of that cold rain. It's high, it's dirty, these fish are gonna have some lockjaw. So we're gonna hopefully be able to utilize these techniques I talked about, but listen, here's the motto of this. You can still catch them when it's cold and muddy in the spring. Spring rains are inevitable, and use these techniques, you know, tighter, slower, vibration and sound, use color to, to help really find, you know, help them fish find the bait. Use those tricks. You can still catch them when it's those conditions. So cold, muddy water in the spring, Let's go fishing. Let's see if we can catch a couple. Okay, so guys, we're starting to fish out here. And uh, you know, again, cold spring rains, uh, this water level's high, and it's just around 50 degrees. Before this system came through, we had a water temperature that was 55, 56. So big drop in water temperature. And that was really the result of that cold, dirty water coming in, brought this temperature down. So. 50 degrees, the good news is 50 degrees isn't ice cold, but these fish are definitely in shock. And we're gonna see if we can use some of these baits to help get these fish to bite. You know, the first thing we're fishing here, and um, I know you heard me talk about it, I, I just wanted to flush this out a little more with you, is newly emerged lily pads. And you know, this time of the year in the spring, these pads, most of them aren't even to the surface. Uh, I'm fishing a little group right here as I'm talking to you, and with my eyes, I can see them. A lot of times, too, if you look on your depth finder, they look like little white dots on your depth finder. Uh, but these pads are absorbers of the heat, right? So you see the sun out behind me here, and think about the shape of it, right? A lily pad's round. It's, it's like a disc, right? It's like a heating disc, like a satellite. Um, if you think about solar panels, right? They use the, the width and the length of that panel to absorb the sun. That's, that's what these lily pads are doing. They're absorbing the heat. So even though the water's cold and dirty, even though these fish are sort of like in shock, they'll get into these pads and they'll, they'll use it as a blanket, right? They'll use it as a heat blanket. And um, you heard me mention it before, but chatterbait, uh, spinnerbait right there wake bait, rattle trap, perfect uh, for fishing over these pads. And you know, I'm not burning it, you know, like I'm, I'm getting it out there and I'm, I'm literally trying to, trying to bang the pads. I'm trying to almost, I'm almost slow rolling it around the roots, um, you know, banging around there, but they're in there. When that water got dirty and cold, before the dirty cold water came, they were loose to the pads. When the dirty cold water came and came up, they got right in the pads, elbow to elbow with those pads. Yeah, it's pretty calm today. Been blowing for like a week. Got him, big one. In the pads, in those pad stems. It's a big one, guys. It's a bass, too! It's a big bass! We're coming right out of the pads, guys. Talked about those pads being, yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, we talked about those. Oh, man, that was awesome. We talked about those pads being blankies, radiant heat, like, like they're absorbing the heat. And great example, like, like behind me, and when we get closer, I'll show you, but these pads are just barely up, but, but they're already emerging. They're already shooting out. And you can see this water, look at it, dude. It's, this lake's normally gin clear. This water's dirty. So these fish, they're not roaming out in open water. They're getting tight to those cover targets. And dude, that is a killer under these conditions. Cold, Dirty water in the spring. Look, you can even see the algae on there. Cold, dirty water in the spring. Remember, utilizing 
vibration, utilizing sound. And last but not least, look at that orange kicker blade, guys. See it? Utilizing color to help those fish find it. But, dude, he wasn't left of it, right of it, dead in the middle of those pads, elbow to elbow with those lily pads, using that heat as a blankie under these cold springtime water conditions. That's a good one. All right, guys, let's let this fish go, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the bait, and I want to show you these lily pads because they can be key, especially in the spring. Heck yeah, that's more bass than I caught out here in the last 10 times I've been out. <laughs> that was a joke. I've caught some out here. All right, guys, you heard me say it. I just real quick want to flash back on this for you. Um, killer, killer, dirty springtime water when this water is rising. Chatterbait, spinnerbait. This is a Mullix water slash half ounce, a double Colorado. Using that orange kicker blade, this is a color called, called mud vein, help those fish find it. But... You heard me talking about it. I don't use a trailer a lot on a spinnerbait. I, I honestly, probably 75% of the time, I don't use a trailer. I use a trailer hook, but I don't use a trailer. But when that water's cold and dirty in the spring, I'm a big advocate of a trailer. And I like something that has some movement, a boot tail, a little swim bait. Uh, this is the, the boot tail version of the power stinger and uh, perfect on there. And that trailer is going to do two things. It's going to give it some extra vibration. It's going to give it some extra drawing power right to the fish. But it's also going to let me slow it down. Look at that trailer on there. It's almost like a buoyancy body that now instead of throwing it in those pads and I'm trying to slow roll it and it's wanting to hit the bottom and get lost in the muck and in the pad stems. Now I can float it a little more because I got this buoy on the back that allows me to fish it slower. So uh key bait that's the first bite out here came out of pads i'm i'm pretty excited let's see if we can see if we can catch some more all right guys uh just power pulled down real quick to give you a look at this is actually the group of pads we just caught that fish in um and and some of them there's a few of them here that are getting near the top but most of these pads are submerged right so most of these pads we've got let's call it you know eight 10 inches to a couple feet over top of them. And it's a good look at why in the spring, when you have a storm and you have dirty, cold rain, right? Not warm rain, cold rain that's influxed. Dude, those fish are gonna get right next to that. There's that shape of that pad. It's not quite a circle, but an oval shape. And that thing is capturing that radiant heat of that sun it's warming up the pad face. It's warming up the stem. Of course, there's a root system down there. All that stuff's absorbing the heat. And those fish under cold, dirty water, they're sucking to it. Dude, dude they're like on it. They're like elbow to elbow with it. So good look at, at one of the forms of cover that can be really good uh, under these conditions. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hit a pad and spooked me. You're a good big one. Giant bass out of pads on that Mollock spinnerbait, guys. Kicker blade, orange. It's the pattern's working. This is the proof, guys. Cold, dirty water. Cold, dirty water. You can catch them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, if that's not a good look. At what? That spinnerbait is so good under these conditions. I don't know what it, I mean, come on. Like, in his throat, look at it. No trailer hook. Berkeley power stinger. Paddling power stinger, because it's got the power, uh, paddle tail in the back. Um, think about it. I, I know it's not like a broken record, but in the spring, you're going to get cold, dirty water. Spring showers, April showers. It's going to happen. When that cold, dirty water comes rolling through, get tight to the cover. The cover, whether it's pads like we're fishing right now, or wood, or docks, or stumps, they're gonna get right next to it, and they're gonna use them as blankets. They're gonna absorb that heat. They're also using it to ambush the bait. The bait's in there too, and that's a good look at it right there. Oh my gosh, dude. Talk about exciting. <laughs> look at that thing. Is that not crazy? 
And that's a chunk, dude. I mean, that is a, that is a pre-spawn chunk right there, dude. All right, let's let that fish go. Dude, look at the, look at the width of that thing. That fish isn't 16 inches long and he's probably, he's probably almost three, two and three quarter probably. Fat, thick fish. Oh boy. Wow. Dude, there's nothing, in fishing, there's nothing better than going out and figuring it out, right? The puzzle. And, uh, you know, again, cold, dirty water, don't write it off. Change up your presentation. Get tighter to the cover. Use vibration. Use sound. Use color, a little bit of bright color, to help those fish hone in on the bait. And you're going to catch them. Dude, wow. I mean, absolutely. Dude, I mean, look at this. Like, he actually, like, mangled it a little bit. He hit it so hard. Colorado blade. Look at that Colorado blade. I don't know if I'll call it a secret, but it's copper. It's not gold. It's not silver. It's copper. Copper. <laughs> copper. Copper. Dude. It's got a 3 8 missile mini flip. Green pumpkin, but it's got the real bright orange in the skirt. The color is called Bammer Crawl. Get us a, a three inch. This is shape 108. This is that Berkeley Powerbait Crawl. Should bite it down maybe a hair. Now it's a little still too translucent for me for this dirty water. So I want a little more color. It's got like orange, spike it. We'll hit both those claws, front and back. Get a lot of color put on there. All right. Let's see. That's a real good, uh, obviously with the orange in there, it's a real good crawfish imitator, but it's a real good bluegill imitator. And with this water being high, we're seeing a, a ton of bluegill up in these shallows. Once again, just real tight to the cover. Pads, wood, they just get tight, you know? So, let's see. That little bush right there is it. Hmm. We'll just fish this dock and then I'll get back to, I'm just, I'm just really surprised. There he goes. There he goes. It's in that bush. Muddy, dirty, cold water. Tight to cover. All right, guys, there you go. We, uh, we had a really good start fishing pads and we kind of ran out of pads to fish. So we're in that same area of the lake, same exact conditions. 50 degree water temperature, this temperature has dropped over the last couple weeks. If you look, you can only see this bait 10, 12 inches down, normally gin clear here, and cold, right? Cold, dirty water in the spring, fish wanting to be up spawning, but, but it's pushed them back. Remember the rules, guys. Sound, vibration, color, Look at that. That's that half ounce missile mini flip with a lot of orange in it. Use the spike it pen on that shape 108. Um, tight to cover. The last piece of the puzzle, right? They're going to get elbow to elbow with the cover. They're going to do that to have an ambush point and they're going to do it to get warm. They're blankies. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this shot video on the water talking about cold spring rains and how to fish it, right? Cold, muddy water in the spring. If you like these shop videos, hit the subscribe button. You know you wanna. If you're already subscribed, tell your friends about this channel, Mike Iaconelli Fishing on YouTube. We're here to help you hopefully learn a few things and become a better angler. So, hope you enjoyed this shop, talking about April cold water conditions. See you at the next one, bye. Hey everybody, Mike Iaconelli out in the shop. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, you have to check out that one and that one, and I hope you like them.